good morning. Thank you, Pippa, for the invitation. Um, so this this is this paper is part of a larger project on electoral management bodies in Central America, a region or subregion in Latin America, largely understudied um, with respect to election management and whatnot. So the underlying motivation uh, for this let me come out too good uh, for this project is understanding electoral integrity uh, in Central America, understanding the role that EMBs play uh, in facilitating what some people refer to as credible elections or free and fair elections. And so, you know, in Central America, as in many other parts of the developing world and developing democracies, there are regularly held elections, but there are, of course, irregularities, uh, allegations of fraud, uh, flawed elections, and sometimes citizens accept these outcomes, but many times these are sources of conflict and stability and even violence. And so my research seeks to understand what role the EMBs of, the, of, of Central America play in helping to stabilize this process or provide more uh, certainty over the electoral process. And so this paper in particular looks as uh, two main objectives. First of all, uh, it tracks the performance of electoral management bodies. And so I'll give a conceptualization, oper operationalization of what performance, what I define as performance. And then I seek to explain this performance uh, of four uh, Central American EMBs. And overall, the, the principal research question is, is what impact does politi politicization have on EMB performance? Okay. So uh, the cases that I, that I uh, study in this paper are El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, uh, and their respective uh, electoral management bodies. And so this is... A, this is a qualitative uh, approach that I use in, in the paper, uh, draw on a lot of archival research, um, election reports, news reports, prim various primary and secondary reports, and uh, use primarily case studies to examine uh, EMB performance and to explain EMB performance in these four cases. So I conceptualize uh, EMB performance based on two, uh, what I, what I con uh, consider two important factors uh, of ele the ele in the electoral management literature, autonomy and impartiality. Okay, so autonomy is often conflated with independence, uh, but in the, this paper I, I parse those two out and, and I look at independence as just a formal legal independence, whereas autonomy I consider the, the actual operation and whether or not the, the EMB is, is functionally or, or operationally independent. So autonomy uh, you know, look at it as the ability to, for the EMB to operate free from, from the interference of any outside pressure, uh, political parties, political leaders, the military, uh, criminal organizations, whatnot. Impartiality is whether or not the, the, the EMB has the ability to operate without any political favoritism or bias um, towards a you know, particular political party, leader, etc., etc. Okay, And so I break these, these two... Uh, these two features of, of performance down even further into four, eight indicators total, but four per, per, per indicator for autonomy, looking at the appointment of EMB members. And this is the, the principal members of each EMB, the magistrates uh, in the Central American context, uh, their appointment, their operation, uh, the term of office and their tenure, as well as the budget uh, allocated to each uh, institution. With respect to impartiality, uh, also have four indicators uh, or sub-indicators. And so we'll, uh, in impartiality, I look at the registration of, of parties and uh, candidates for office, uh, the financing of uh, parties and candidates for office, uh, also the reporting of election results and electoral rulings made by each uh, institution. All right, so I, so I use these two measures of uh, electoral management performance uh, and I, what I do in, the, in my research is I note uh, violations of these, of these indicators. And so this is a, a negative conceptualization, or a negative measurement, and we can talk about that later if you like, but that's uh, more or less what I do in this, in this paper. And so in the paper I provide, uh, I, I code every country, uh, each of these four countries, by election year. So I'm looking at El Salvador from 1994 to 2009. Guatemala from 96 to 07, Honduras from 93 to 09, and Nicaragua from 90 to 2006. So a range of about 12 to 15 years per case 
uh, by election year. Okay, uh, in the paper I provide a, a more detailed analysis by country per election year, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to present the average number of violations of either autonomy or impartiality uh, per per country. And so overall, the the Salvadoran uh, Supreme Electoral Tribunal has the highest number of violations for autonomy and impartiality. This is largely a function of just the, the number of elections in the time period that, that I've studied. Uh, but I think it's, a, it's, it's uh, more appropriate to look at, look at the average number of violations of these indicators per country. And so on average, when we look at autonomy, uh, the Honduran Supreme Electoral Tribunal has the highest number of violations uh, for autonomy, uh, suggesting that uh, the Honduran electoral management body has the lower, lowest level of, of autonomy or functional independence among these four cases. Whereas Guatemala tends to have the highest level of, uh, of autonomy in relation to these other three countries. Right? With respect to impartiality, uh, the, the evidence analysis suggests that the Salvadoran uh, Supreme Electoral Tribunal has the the lowest uh, level of, of impartiality with, with the ha highest average number of violations of that indicator, with Nicaragua not, not too far behind. Right? And again, Guatemala tends to, do, tends to have better performance overall amongst these four cases. Now, that's not to say that Guatemala, everything's fine in Guatemala. I was there just last year, and it's not, not a very safe place. You can't take out your phone and whatnot. But uh, with respect to EMB performance, Right, tends to do a little better than its uh, regional neighbors. Okay, so this is kind of a, a broad overview of EMB performance for these countries. So how do we explain uh, their performance? So I look at a, a couple, of, a few different uh, explanations. One expectation it looks it draws on previous research in this broader project and look at the institutional legacies of how these EMBs were introduced. Some EMBs were introduced. Uh, so all these. Institutions were introduced, were created, you can say, within the past three decades or so. So they're relatively new, uh, all created as formerly independent institutions. Uh, but some were imposed, you can say, and some were negotiated through multi-party negotiations. And so in Guatemala and Honduras, you have the, the, the creation of these institutions by, in effect, the military regimes in the 70s and 80s. Whereas in El Salvador, you have multi-party negotiations and to a lesser extent in Nicaragua as well. And so the, the expectation is that those EMBs introduced through multi-party negotiations are more likely to have better performance, right? Lower levels of violations of autonomy and impartiality. Uh, the second explanation that I propose, it looks at the role of electoral systems organizations. And so very, very straightforward expectation. Uh, you, Countries with higher levels uh, and activity of electoral assistance organizations are more likely to have better performance with respect to their, to their EMBs, uh, whereas uh, the, the converse, I, I expect the converse as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I, I look at uh, politicization, right? formal and informal politicization. This is drawing from the literature on election management that, that, that indicates that the ideal EMB type is one that's legally independent from other branches of government and is nonpartisan, right? And so drawing from that, right, the, the expectation is that those EMBs that have uh, formal representation of political parties uh, are more likely to have poor performance or more violations of EMB autonomy and impartiality. But I also draw on informal politicization. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of go over that. Uh, we can talk about it later if, if there's time. All right, so the main findings uh, in, this, in this analysis uh, is that there, there are significant differences in the performance of e each EMB. We've seen this in the, uh, in the table I presented earlier. There are significant differences, right, between Guatemala and, say, uh, with respect to autonomy in Guatemala and, and, and Honduras or Guatemala and El Salvador. There, there are significant differences in the performance as I've conceptualized it. Um, overall, the, the institutional legacy expectation, the nature of, of the introduction, doesn't really seem to carry over for the subsequent performance of these EMBs um, in each of the cases. Uh, there does seem to be a positive uh, impact uh, for electoral assistance organizations. Uh, for instance, in Nicaragua in 1990, 
uh, there was you know high level uh, presence of electoral assistance organizations, and it seemed to contribute to the overall performance of the Nicaraguan Supreme Electoral Council. But in other cases, it's, there 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 is the presence of these of these organizations, but the the outcome performance is not too positive. Overall, my, my analysis suggests that politicization, both formal and informal, seems to be the most important factor in explaining what is going on with these institutions. Right? When you have formal representation of parties in the institutions uh, or informal, uh, in, uh, informal representation of, of political parties in these institutions, you tend to have uh, poor performance, i.e. a high number of violations of autonomy and impartiality. So the implications of this uh, are pretty simple. Right? It's, it's, not, it's not surprising. Right, based on the literature uh, on election management, that you have partisan EMBs, you have poor performance right, or, or ineffective electoral management. And so in Central America, it's very clear there's a divergence between the principle and practice in election management. Right? You have these principles that, that follow very closely the, the, the prescriptions of, of scholars and the, the policy oriented literature about having an independent EMB and having a nonpartisan EMB. But what takes place in practice, and, uh, you know, very often diverges from what should be done. And so, you know, another implication is that, you know, in, in Central America, you have the, the f more or less the formal requirements, right? You have formal independence and, and more or less uh, these EMBs that are supposed to be nonpartisan, but uh, it, it, that's just not the case. And so I argue that formal independence is, is simply a necessary condition, but, but by no means sufficient for uh, a positive performance amongst these EMBs. Uh, so in future research, uh, I, I would like to extend this analysis to uh, additional cases, examine the external validity of, the, of these analyses, um, and also uh, look at the relationship between performance and, and citizens' trust in these institutions. And so I've already done some, uh, some work on this, but uh, I look forward to doing uh, more work on this uh, in the future. Thank you.